In this demo, I'll be talking about UDFs. They fall under the umbrella of distributed functions, into which will be UDFs, user-defined functions, store procedures, and triggers. Store procedures and triggers are yet to come, but in this demo, I'll be talking about the new features available in UDFs. As of 23.1, we'll support subqueries in UDFs, UDFs that return a set of values as opposed to scalar values or void, inline scalar UDFs, scalar functions that can be inlined for performance benefits, and I'll demonstrate the difference between inlining and not inlining, the use of UDFs in check constraints, so against a column if you want to validate the input before you commit it to a column, you can use a check constraint to do that, and now you can call UDFs to perform that check. And finally, you can set default values from UDFs. I'll start by creating a table. As per all of my demos, it's super contrived. We have an ID, a decimal amount, a timestamp, a date value, which is a computed value from the timestamp. It just takes the truncated date part and it creates indexes on amount and date, storing amount. This is called a covering index and I'll go through that in another demo. And I'll insert some data into it. So I'll be demoing set of and subqueries in this first part of the demo. So the data I'm inserting now will help with that. We've got data for today and we've got data for tomorrow. Now I'll create a function that will return large transactions that occurred today. By large transactions, I just mean transactions that are greater than the average value of a transaction for a given day. So I'm using two new features of UDFs in this. I'm using the set of, so this function will return a set of decimals and nested queries or sub queries. I'm selecting the average amount from the purchase table where the date is today, and I'll feed that back up to a select against the purchase table where I return the amount. To execute a function, it's a simple select. Today, we have 399 and 499, which corresponds to the values that are greater than the average for today. Next, we'll look at inline scalar UDFs. I'll create a table. This is just, again, a very contrived stock table that contains a product ID, the amount of product on hand and the amount that we've sold of that product today. I'll insert a bunch of random data into that table. So 10,000 random on hand values and sold today values. Next, I'll create two functions. One will be an immutable function to show an inlined variant of a function. And that will simply return the delta between what we started with and what we're left with now. Next, I'll create the same function, but underscore mute, mutable function. I omit the immutable keyword, which makes it a volatile function and therefore not inlineable. Let's call the inline function 48 milliseconds to run. And let's run the same thing from the non-inlined mutable function. So the difference is quite stark. It's over 200 milliseconds slower. So if your function has no side effects, doesn't leak anything and is immutable, use the immutable keyword because as of 23.1, you'll get the benefits of inlining. Next, I'll create a function that can be used from within a check constraint. First, I'll create the function because it will be consumed from the table. So it will need to exist first. And this function will simply say has a product identifier. Let's say in this example, we're running an online store and for a product, we have either a POU, a price lookup or a LIN, a line item number. And this will check that we have either. We can either have a POU or an LIM. We don't care which, we just need to have one. Next, I'll create a table. So it will have a primary key ID and either a PLU or an LIN. They're both strings, they're both nullable, but they both have a check constraint against them that ensures that one or the other is provided. Next, I'll insert some data. So in this first row, I'll create a product with both a PLU and an LIN. I'll create a product with a PLU, but without an LIN. And finally, I'll create a product without a PLU, but with an LIN. I expect these to all be inserted successfully. And lastly, I'll insert a product without a PLU or an LIN. And as expected, we received an error because the check constraint failed. Finally, I'll demonstrate setting default values for columns based on UDFs. In this function, I'm wrapping the gen random UUID in a function called UUID. Because this is volatile, it will run slightly slower than the gen random UID. So I probably wouldn't use this in the wild as there's already a useful function for it. It's just for demonstration purposes. You'll more likely want to provide data for other columns. Next, I'll create a table measurement, which has an ID, which is a UUID primary key. And the default value is a call to our UUID function, which wraps gen random UUID. I'll create another table. This time we'll use the gen random UUID directly. Then I'll insert 10,000 random values into the original measurement table that sets the default value for the ID based on a call to our UUID function. That took 366 milliseconds. And I'll do the same again for the table that just calls gen random UUID. Quite a lot faster. And the reason for this is because the function that calls gen random UUID 
can't be made immutable because the call to gen random UID is volatile. This way of using a function would be super useful if you're not setting primary keys using gen random UID. Again, it's just to demonstrate the point. In summary, 23.1 provides a bunch of useful features for UDFs. They're all available in the alpha version of CockroachDB at the moment, so you can download it, have a play. They'll be available as of 23.1.